So, barley comes into the distillery having already been uh, steeped, falsely germinated, and then ultimately put in a kiln for drying. Then you get through to the actual malting process, it creates malted barley that arrives at a distillery and goes through one of these guys, the malt mill. Uh, this is actually a Porteous mill, uh, dates back decades and decades, and it's so reliable that they've actually managed to do themselves out of business uh, because it just never breaks down. Uh, once it goes through the uh, mill, you get fine grist, you get a lovely little powdery substance, and then we're ready to head off into the mash room. Uh, so now we are in the mash room, and this is where the grist from the, uh, the, the mill downstairs is sent up, and then it gets converted into uh, starches, then the sugar gets uh, dissolved over three cycles through a lauter ton. It's very hot. Um, and then from there, it goes into the washbacks to start the fermentation process. So the wort from that lauter ton is then fed into here, into one of the washbacks that you can see in this room right now. And the purpose of this is to start the fermentation with the addition of yeast. And that slowly bubbles away for roughly three days at the Aberfeldy distillery where we are. And from that, you get a roughly an 8% uh, creamy, bitter, kind of watery beer uh, type substance, which isn't that great for you. Um, it tastes quite, quite nice, actually, um, after, after you get used to it but it's very good for clearing out the old stomach. And when you nose it or have a little sniff of the washbacks, your sinuses will be clear as hell. And once that's done, we're off to the still room to see where the magic happens. And so here is where the magic really does happen. Uh, the wash comes through from the washbacks, fed through into the wash stills, which are these guys. And each one, that one's 16,600 liters. This one's also 16,600 uh, liters. And what happens here is you start to, similar to what happens in a kettle, it boils up and then with copper contact, the vapors ping all over the, uh, the stills themselves and then gradually go up and over along the line arm into the condenser. And then from there, it gets collected into a tank and put into the spirit stills behind us. So once uh, it's come through the wash still, headed up and been condensed into the low wines, it's then fed into the spirit still. And then what happens here is we take that roughly 14, maybe 20 ABV uh, uh, liquid, and then that's when it really, really starts to get its oomph. And through the uh, distillation process in the spirit still, that ABV then goes up to around 70.7 ABV for Aberfeldy. Um, and again, all of those lovely flavors and esters and all of the amazing things that turn into a really flavorsome and, uh, and, and quite a fruity, honeyed, new make spirit come from all of that bouncing around through the still and all of the vapors going up over the line arm uh, down into the next condenser. And then once we're at the right ABV and it's pure spirit, it then gets fed through to maturation. So behind me, we've got the spirit safe. And this is where every single drop of spirit produced from the spirit stills runs through. And this is where it's, uh, you can draw samples, you can work out the actual ABV, the purity. And when you know when to switch from the low wines to the cut, the purest cut or the heart of the spirit, and then also to the faints as well. And historically, and you see the big padlock on the side here, historically the excise man or woman would have had a, a, a key to that padlock as well as the distillery manager, and they'd both have to be on site to open it. Not so much nowadays, but the, uh, back in the day, that's how everything was reported. And every single milliliter that goes through here gets reported to HMRC, Revenue and Customs, for tax purposes and for logging of spirit produced. 